Okay, hello everybody. Welcome to Korean Atlanta Mentorship. So uh, we are on the journey to make 10,000 videos on the same subject, which is about why we shouldn't save money and uh, how to do velocity banking. Now, why is that? It's because uh, there's this Bruce Lee quote, I fear not the man who has practiced 10,000 kicks once, but I fear the man who has practiced one kick 10,000 times. And so we're just going to make the same video over and over again. I think when we're in video 500. I don't know. Uh, but we'll get there. And we're going to talk about why uh, we don't need to save money, right? We're, we're, you know, in, in this household, savings accounts are prohibited. And the only exceptions are uh, if all you have is zero interest debt, maybe you could grow your money in a savings account temporarily. Or you need access to a credit union. So, you, you know, they give you, they say, hey, you got to have a savings account to join our credit union. That's the only time I'll do it. But other than that, not allowed, illegal, prohibited, right? And so as you can see here, I practice what I preach. Got a beginning balance of $0 and I always end with $0. And this is the opposite of what our good friend, uh, Mr. Dave Ramsey says, which is step one. And you'll notice that um, in many of the videos, I just critique step one, saving $1,000 over and over again, rather than using our line of credit as our savings account. Because you know, while we're paying off debt, our line of credit is our new savings account. We're dumping our entire money into that line of credit, which is essentially what velocity banking is, right? So what is velocity banking? All it is is a debt payoff strategy using lines of credit as your main tool, okay? So... Uh, order to velocity banking, uh, we just have two things that we need to do. Number one is a budget, which we have. A uh, person makes good income, has lots of credit cards, 10 credit cards and a mortgage and some other stuff. So what, what's really important is we have to separate the debt versus the, the stuff that is not debt. Because every time we pay off debt, that increases our cash flow. And um, it, you know we always assume that all of our expenses that are not related to debt are fixed that we're always going to have to pay for food gas insurance and all that other good jazz so we have hundred sixty thousand thousand dollars of credit card debt and a three hundred thousand dollar mortgage we're just going to focus on paying off the credit card debt today and again making that comparison of what happens when we do velocity banking versus saving money because the opposite of velocity banking is saving money it's literally just saving money with the help of a line or not saving money, dumping all your money with the help of a line of credit. That's essentially what velocity banking is zero savings with the help of a line of credit. And so set step number two is that we're going to have a line of credit as our main operating account, right? That's, that's our main operating account, the line of credit. So what is a line of credit? All it is a financial tool where you can borrow money, pay back, and use it over and over again. And right now, I think I'm at $270,000 uh, in credit limits. 279 I think. Now, I feel like in a few months, it's going to grow It's going to grow bigly. I, I think that's a word, bigly. Or is that a word I heard from The Simpsons? Okay, but it's going to grow huger. I, I don't even think that's a word. But it's, it's, it's going to even be bigger than that, just give it a few months. So... Uh, all you need is one main operating account, one line of credit. Uh, technically, credit cards do count as lines of credit, right? But we we prefer to have everything. So we prefer to have personal home equity or a credit card. Um, in this example, we have access to $175,000 uh, home equity line of credit. That's just like having a credit card based on the your value of your home, right? Home equity line of credit. And we also assume two things. Same income, but even though here we only have a penny of savings, we're going to go the opposite direction of uh, what Mr. Dave Ramsey teaches us, which is save a thousand dollars, right? And he says, in a beginner emergency fund, he says, You're a noob, you do step one, you're automatically noob ter newbie territory. That's what he's saying, right? So, are we going to save a thousand dollars or are we, go are we going to do velocity banking regardless of the amount that we could potentially save? make sure our savings goes to zero and apply all of our money to, to our debt, right? We're going to apply all of our money to our debt. Um, so let's just go ahead and do this here. Okay. So the budgets for the average American and velocity banking are almost the same. They're almost exact same thing, but instead of having savings, we have this thing called cash flow, which looks exactly like savings, right? 
But when we do velocity banking, we're never going to have savings until our debt is paid off, right? Like we're never going to have savings. Now let's figure out when we're in this situation, how long does it take for us to save $1,000? We got a penny of savings because we got all this credit card debt. It's crazy, right? And so luckily I created this table here, which I don't ever do again, but the table will show us all of our payments for every single month and show us how long it will take for us to save $1,000. So as you can see in month one or the first month, we're saving, we're paying $5,345 and we're slightly paying less and less and less because as, as you know, if you make payments to credit cards, the payments do go down uh, because they're tied to usually a percentage to, to the balance and you pay mostly interest with a little bit of principal, right? And then as you can see, this is the leftover, right? A penny, uh, $50, $100, you know, uh, $150, $200, $262, $300. $300. And then if you sum them all up, you can kind of see that it takes seven months to save $1,100, okay? Seven months, right? Now, let's take a look at the amount of interest that we pay to the credit cards while we're trying to save that $1,000. It's going to take us, and again, I, I created another table of interest, solely interest, 24 grand. It's going to take us 24 grand to say, we're paying 24 grand to credit card companies just to save $1,000, right? And again, Dave Ramsey's advice is just not like there's any, there's no exceptions. This is, this is all a blanket advice. Save $1,000. No, we're not going to do that because in order to save that $1,000, we're going to have to um, pay for it in two ways. Number one is time, seven months. Number two is interest, which is 24 grand, 24 grand. Okay. Now let's just do the exact opposite. So what we're going to do is we're not, we're instead of, going the other direction, which is saving $1,000, we're going to go to from one penny to $0, and we're going to increase something called our cash flow, because what's the actual velocity banking strategy? Paycheck into line of credit, expenses out of line of credit. That's the actual strategy. So whenever you have your entire pay coming to your checking account, you put it directly into the line of credit. Now, we have not set this up yet to use our line of credit, and I know what some of you are thinking. Who has a $175,000 line of credit available? That's true because banks don't lend to people who need it, right? They don't lend to people who need money, right? So that's why I'm able to get $279,000 in lines of credit because I always got it when I didn't need it. See, that's how their business model works. If if you ever ask for a, to go to a bank and say, hey, I need money now. I only got a penny left over. They'll laugh you out of the building. Okay, which is why it's important to have a firm financial foundation before you even get into debt. So because I learned all this stuff before I even um, got, let's say, I only had like a five hundred dollar. Did I have a five hundred dollar credit card at the time? I didn't know I had like a two thousand dollar credit card. But what I'm saying is that I learned this before I ever dealt with credit, so I never got into the situation. And whatever uh, debt that I have, I just put it into the line of credit and put my entire paycheck in, expenses out. Now this is what we're gonna do. Okay, what we're going to do is move these credit cards into that line of credit, just do a simple debt transfer. And again, how much do we have here, right? 10 credit cards. And so that's $167,000 of credit card debt, $167,000. Okay, so let's move that here. And this is going to be month zero. And what happens when you move all of this credit card debt into that line of credit? All of these payments go to zero right? Zero, zero, zero. And then guess what happens? We made a penny turn into $5,345 in the first day of doing this, right? And if we had, if we ever needed a thousand dollars for emergencies, oh my goodness, we don't have to wait seven months for that thousand dollars, nor do we have to pay 24 grand in interest. Now, here's the other thing too. I know what some of you are thinking, Okay, well, you, all you did was just transfer debt. And, you know, if you had an additional line of credit, anybody could do this, right? And that's actually not true because I see people who screw up with lines of credit all the time. Because think about this. Let's say that, you know, we're still doing the banking way that the average American does it, which is making your checking count as your main operating account rather than your line of credit. 
And then let's say that I have a thousand dollar emergency. Okay. Thousand dollar emergency today. What would happen if I did things the average American way? Well, a lot of times, okay, many uh, banks and all that, they have, um, you know, uh, when you deal with lines of credit or credit cards, they say, hey, it's a minimum of $25 or percentage, whatever is higher, right? So let's say that to borrow this $1,000, we had to pay $25 in, in a payment. And so if we go ahead and do that, and then it's minus 25. And so we're in negative savings territory, right? So it's not just having additional credit lines available. That's not velocity banking. Velocity banking is using your line of credit as your main operating account, right? So let's go ahead and put all those credit cards back in. $167,000 of debt. 167,000. Okay. All right. So now what you do is you put your, again, entire paycheck into the line of credit which is going to satisfy the minimum monthly payment, so it's not really going to matter. And number two, you're going to minimize the interest, right? Um, so then you take your expenses out, right? Make sure all your expenses get paid. And then after every single month, the balance is going to go down by $5,345 and some change, um, and you get charged some interest, okay? So to in order to calculate this, again, it's I2 plus 1, um, that's month one, and then the next month's balance is the previous month's balance plus the previous month's interest minus, okay, this cash flow number right here, which is 5345.84, okay? And then after every single month, we get charged interest, so we take the average daily balance, multiply it by the interest rate, which is 10% in this case, and home equity lines of credit, they could range usually from eight point something. I've even seen as low as seven, to usually about 18% max, but I've never seen anybody really get 18% max, but that's like the, the maximum limit you're allowed to be charged for home equity line of credit. All right, so now what we do is we just kind of keep going and going and going, and you can see how easily the debt gets paid off. Now, um, well, let's, let's just figure out how long it'll take for us to pay off that intro, that that uh, credit card debt, and again, thirty seven months, thirty seven months to pay off that credit card debt, right? So thirty seven divided by twelve, that's about three years. Now here's the crazy part, okay? Like I said, if we did things the average American way, where we had a thousand dollar emergency, um, we're screwed because we're gonna be in negative savings territory, especially for that one month, right? So now. Let's go ahead and have a thousand dollar emergency here in in the very first month that we do this and plus one zero zero zero. Okay, no problem. Like it's it's barely a change and our our time to pay off has not changed at all, right? So we're still at thirty seven months. Okay, so we have a thousand dollar emergency in the beginning. We're still fine. So that's pretty much it as a quick refresher for velocity banking. Again, the whole point of this is to not save money, right? Not save money. Um, and again, as, as I show you right here, every single month, um, my balance in my checking account is zero, right? I don't have any money in my checking account. So whatever goes in, I dump it into the line of credit. And I use a strategy that involves both credit cards and lines of credit. So what I do, again, this is just, it's not advanced, but sometimes it takes a little bit of time to understand, is that yes, my home equity line of credit is still gonna be my main operating account, right? It's gonna still be my main operating account, but the trick is, is that you can still keep your credit cards open. That The, the trick is, is that whatever you're using credit cards, it's only gonna equal up to your food, gas, insurance, you know, your regular expense budget. And so it will, you know, the, the balance of the line of credit is still going to go down. And the, adva the advantage of doing this is that credit cards have a little bit uh, more perks than, you know, your regular home equity or personal lines of credit. What credit cards, they do, they give you bonus points, cash rewards. Um, and the most important thing is that you could essentially delay interest that you pay. So, for example, if I charge twenty five hundred dollars uh, directly from a line of credit, I accrue interest that that same day or the day after, right? I accrue interest immediately. 
Okay. Now, um, okay. So, but if I use a credit card and I pay it off in full, and then I use my line of credit to pay off, I've essentially delayed paying that interest. Okay. And not only that, I got bonus points. So that that's essentially what I would do. But that, again, I use both. I got everything, you know, you get the credit before you need it and then use the strategy. And so if you're ever in a tight crunch where, you know, you've been a little bit reckless and how do I know people are like this? Because some of you randomly email me in, in these situations. It's crazy, right? Like so the people who are like this were theoretical before I made this channel. And then once random people started emailing me their budgets, like I'm so rich, but I'm broke. And I'm like, all right, well, let's see what we can do. Um, <laughs> well, I know that this is real, right? So that's this is essentially the the situation we're trying to prevent. I, again, this is a, not an income generation strategy. And here's the other thing too: banks don't lend to poor people, right? So if you're not making enough money, that's the step one. And then step two, which is where people get tripped up, the more money they make, the more um, they get tripped up. Um, they're like, where'd all my money go, right? Because they're doing things the average American way. And instead of focusing on using all of their money to pay debt, um, it's, it's, you know, we're trained to have a focus on having savings, especially this three to six months. Now, again, this is not a bad plan because you have the three to six months after you pay off all your debt, but it's just like, why not just go all in and then if you have expenses, just pull it from the line of credit, right? That's that's what they allow you to do in the line of credit. Okay, well, this is Korean Atlanta Mentorship. Um, just another video of uh, Velocity Banking. And again, oh, I don't know when we'll reach 10,000, but we'll get there someday, right? <laughs> All right, have a great day, everybody.